Hey guys, this is Gabriel Lorenzi, creator of the blog Grupo Dicas, one of the biggest travel blogs in the world. And today we are going to talk about the wineries in Mendoza, the famous bodegas as they call them there, which are the main attraction of the city. Everyone who loves wine says that Mendoza is Disneyland for adults, because for those who love wine, folks, it's a spectacular city and there are many tips, which are the wineries, which are the regions, how to get to the wineries, do I stay at the winery? Do do I stay downtown? How am I going to drive? What am I going to do? How do I hire the services? What are the services? There are many nice tips. We have organized everything here in this video for you to know exactly which are the wineries and how to visit them in Mendoza. So guys, enjoy the video. Don't forget to give us the like, subscribe to the channel because that really helps us a lot and buckle up. Well, Mendoza is one of the most touristy cities in all of South America. It's the second city in Argentina after Buenos Aires, and it's a place that has a lot of things to do. But half of these attractions are wineries, the famous bodegas, they call them bodegas. People, the main attraction of the city are the bodegas. It's one of the cities in the world that has the most wineries. The wine there, it's very good, the food there. And the cool thing about Mendoza is that it's surrounded by the Andes, and in the back you can see the Andes going by. So so it's a beautiful and spectacular scenario and there are many adventures for you to do mountain tours kayaking on the lakes more adventurous tours guys there is everything sporty and adventurous to do there in the mountains and also the tours in the city center so we are going to quickly summarize for you the main ones what you can't leave out so that you know how to organize your trip and get to know the best wineries possible see the options of the tours so that you can have the most fun and enjoy the most your entire trip to Mendoza and the wineries. In this video now, I'll tell you what to do, but there's another video, guys, which is about all the tips of Mendoza. We talk everything, when to go, the season, how many days to stay, what to do, how to rent the car, where to stay, how to hire the chip, everything. All the tips are there. This one, we focus on the tours and attractions because it's quite a lot of things to do. So let's start with the bodegas, the wineries, because it's the main attraction. For you to have an idea, Mendoza has more than 1,500 wineries, millions and millions of wines produced per year. It's an absurd business. The predominant wine there, the most famous, is Malbec, which is the specialty of the place. So don't miss it, you can't help but taste it, because everywhere you go you will see that they will offer it to you. Any restaurant has wine, sometimes wine is cheaper than soda, because it's a typical product and there is plenty of it for everyone how do the wineries work guys there is mendoza downtown okay downtown mendoza i'll explain it to you here later that's where most of the hotels are the center everything and then there are the regions of the wineries they are divided into three regions the first one closest is maipu which in my opinion is not so beautiful and not so nice so you have to prioritize the others but maipu has a good point that it's much closer to the center so a lot of people sometimes go to the wineries by bike the access is easier there are people who choose to commute to visit the wineries there there are nice wineries there the ones that I recommend are Casa El Enemigo it's a very nice one if not the most famous we think it's very nice there's also Sinfin which I thought was very nice and the Familia Zucardi this Familia Zucardi I thought was a very elegant place it's a very nice place where you can have tasting and lunch as well it's very nice so in the region of my pool I think these are the best options and they are closer to the center and speaking of packages and it's nice that in the wineries you can choose the package that's only the tour which is the cheapest the tour with the wine tasting which is a little bit more expensive and there's also always a package with lunch with the meal take at least one meal there I say at least one because it's kind of expensive the price is a little bit expensive of course but it's a spectacular experience usually the chef of the place the cook he comes to explain he comes to talk to you they teach you how to eat such food with wine tasting so you get to explore a lot of types of food various flavors it's very nice 
there are these packages so it's just for you to know exactly how to organize yourselves there are people who sometimes do three bodegas a day go to one and have lunch and then go to the other to just do the tour just to do the tasting i think that more than three per day is too much the idea is two because you will walk around a lot get to know them sit down drink your wine and stay calm so i think two three at the most is good but if you can stick to one or two i think it's better so you get to enjoy the place you don't go with such a hurry you taste the wine you enjoy the food in my opinion i think it's way better there is Luhan de Cuyo, which is a very nice region, which already has, I think, a more beautiful landscape. It's further away from the city, it has bigger vineyards too. It's a very nice region, there is even, guys, a hotel to stay there. It's sensational. I'll share it with you here in the video description. Under the video, you go to the description or in the first comments that I'll leave fixed. It's a winery hotel. It's a bodega hotel where you stay in the middle of a winery. It's the most beautiful thing in the world. The price is good. You will see that this is a very nice type of lodging, guys. You need the car, right? For those who are going to stay in the wineries, you have to have the car to go to Mendoza, to go to the places. Otherwise, it gets more complicated. So check it out. I think you will like it. We we'll love it you will be two three minutes away from the main winery so everything becomes easier for a trip focus on the bodegas on the winery so take a look they are very nice hotels this one we loved and it's in a very good region and then in this region that are already very nice wineries Catena Zapata winery which is one of the most famous tips guys this one you need to book about two months even three months in advance because it's very disputed it's one of the most sought after it's a very iconic family in the region i think it's worth it because we like it very much and there is also bodega chandon which i think is nice because it's different it's for those who like sparkling wine there is sparkling wine tasting there it's a way for you to get away from the wine like wine 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 routes this chandon is also very nice i think it's worth including there to differentiate your tour a little bit and the question I get the most about renting a car in Mendoza is Yeah, Gabriel, but I'm going to drink. What do I do? I'm going to drive. How is it? Is there a law there? Are there police? Guys, to be very honest, we did not see any police. People do not report police, breathalyzers, inspections, nothing like that. But it's logical that there's a big issue in safety, common sense. So what did we do? On one day of the trip, one person would not drink or would drink to taste, to try the wines a little. Then they would eat, stay there for a while, enjoying the winery until the alcohol time was over, all with good sense and safety. Of course, you can't drink and drive away because the roads there are good, but you always run the risk. So have good sense, be conscious, take turns. But if you go with friends, if you're uh, with four people in each winery you visit, one of you can drink a little, not drink at all, drive and then switch in the other day. You can take turns and you can do it in a nice way, but always for the love of God, safety first, guys. Don't drink and drive. That's very risky. So stay safe. And an important tip from the wineries from February to April, it's the grape harvest. That's when the grapes are really ready to be harvested. And it's very nice because you can see the bodegas, the whole plantation is stuffed with grapes. You can see the process, they are picking the grapes. It's a very nice time that people sometimes tend to choose this time. Those who really like wine wants to know more about the process. They want to be close to this moment of harvesting. They end up choosing these months. So these are months that are usually very popular for those who like wine and for those who want to know the whole processes of the wineries in depth it's very cool and very beautiful and now the region that's a little bit more distant is the Uco Valley, okay guys? Just for us to finish the subject wineries and bodegas because you saw that it's quite a lot. And to get into the attractions that are of other subjects there in Mendoza, other tours for you to do. This Uco Valley is nice because the downside, it's further away. It's 100 kilometers from Mendoza, so you have to go there. The idea would be to sleep there, get a hotel or something because the trip there and back is kind of tiring. That's why a lot of people 
people end up not knowing it they only know the first two regions this one is more of those who really like wine and want to get to know it there are more sophisticated bodegas there it's very internationally recognized very famous they are very well ranked in the world wine rankings so it's a more refined region there is a restaurant there that we didn't get to go to which is called Siete Fuegos which is one of the most luxurious in the world we were delighted with the videos that show the fires they use the fire to cook in ways that we have never seen before it's very cool it impressed me a lot but we couldn't go because we didn't go there but it's there as an option for those who want something very luxurious and very different from everything else it's a place that must be sensational and the best known wineries there are La Lazu, Salenten and Andeluna but there are a lot of people it's a region that has a lot a lot of luxurious hotels for those who want to spend a top honeymoon something much more upscale it's that region that is the most suitable and as you already saw, people, car rental ends up being very important in a trip to Mendoza. You can not rent a car, of course, but renting a car makes it much easier. So let's get to the quick tips there about car rental for you to do all these tours there with your car. Now talking about the car, we said that the car is important because no matter where you stay in Mendoza, in the center, in the wineries, the car ends up being very good and why the city of Mendoza is beautiful, the wineries are sensational, the most beautiful ones are far away from the center, so you visit the wineries, start there, if you want to visit the wineries, a car is very helpful because it's very difficult to get transportation, unless you do the tours with an agency, you have that option too, we will explain it here, but most people like to have freedom to move around, that are the mountains nearby there is the highest mountain in the world the region is very beautiful to be explored by car so most people who go to Mendoza rent a car and it's very cheap of the whole world Argentina is one of the places that has the cheapest car rental that's why people end up choosing it it ends up being cheaper and you have more freedom our tip the best place to rent a car is at the airport as soon as you arrive pick it up and go to your hotel it's very easy there are several rental companies at the airport and the golden tip to save money people do not go straight to the rental company first thing don't rent there on the spot because it's double the price I'm not kidding if you get there it's double the price and sometimes there is no car available book as soon as possible advanced booking again is very important and before you go home do everything on the internet there is a website that's sensational it's a tool that we discovered years ago it's a car rental comparator I'll leave the link here below everything for you you go there you put them in Donza airport and the amount of days it does a search in all car rental companies at the airport and shows you all the price guys this is great because you end up having a quick search see the cheapest prices it has cheaper prices than the rental companies on website because they are the biggest in the world there are many negotiations there with them so the prices are really good it's the cheapest place we always do it there give preferences to the big car rental companies okay and better known ones to avoid a little bit of a problem but this website is very good I'll leave it here below just so you need your valid national driver's license and a credit card right so if you have these two documents you will be able to rent there without any problem the roads are good they are easy to drive you just have to be careful because sometimes they are dirt roads close to the wineries and they may not be so well signposted but we found it easy we didn't see any problems to get around there by car and the tools you can relax because most of the rental companies put a sticker there which is like a free pass you will pass through the tools easily and then in the end when you return the car they charge the tools on your credit card and they are not expensive either okay guys I remember that the tools were a lot cheaper than I thought they would be so it's not a big cost that you have to worry about I remember it was really really pretty cheap so you don't have to worry about the cost of the tools everything will be in your credit card later on and guys, any questions you may have, send them to us because we are always trying to help, right? We really try. It's even easier and faster. Add me on Instagram, at PyLorenzi. Send me a direct message with your question and I'll help you. It's taking a few days because there are many messages, but I really help. And take the time to follow us there because we are always traveling around the world, offering cool travel tips and the family routine with our little ones who are a blast, guys. And our new YouTube channel, The Familia Lorenzi. If you can, join it later. Give us a hand we are showing our routine here in Orlando we are leaving in the United States we are showing our trips to the Disney parks which are right next door to the other amusement parks our routine here at home it's pretty cool follow us there and I think you're gonna like it the content is very good 
And now, apart from the wineries, there's a very nice tour to do, which is the High Mountain Tour. For those who don't know, Mendoza has the highest mountain in the Southern Hemisphere. The high is absurd. It's a very beautiful landscape. And there is a very famous tour that you can visit there. There is the Del Inca Bridge, which is an incredible place, guys. It's very cool. It's there near the Andes Mountain. It's a little bit away from Mendoza, 180 kilometers more or less from there. And it's more than 2,500 meters high. It's a sensational thing that our lakes on the way it's a very nice tour to do right guys so our tip is get to know these places to go by car sometimes is a little further away and risky we strongly recommend that you go on a tour with an agency they will take you there easily they already know the region the most beautiful spots they stop at the lake they stop at the mountains they know everything it ends up being a much safer and more beautiful trip there's an agency that we took the tours with they are great very good i'll leave their link Link down below for you to take a look their service is really really good guys they do this tour to the high mountain they do other tours to the wineries if you don't have a car or you have a car you want to drink there and don't worry about driving take the tour with them they are very good I'll leave the link below in the description for you click there it will open their whatsapp you can talk uh, they are very good there to do all the tours in the Mendoza region I'm also going to leave a personal website that sells individual tours you talk directly to them with Argentinians in their language but you can maybe get a little better price get them out they are the two places we always compare the tours this website is the biggest ticket and tour website in the world so it has all the tours there you will be able to see the main ones so take a look there to organize your trip but you will see that the main ones are the wineries there is also the wineries tour on this website and this high mountain tour and they also have the transfers if you don't rent a car the best way to go from the airport to the the hotel is with a transfer okay guys you will pay cheaper it's safer and you don't end up falling in the scam of taxi drivers who charge a lot more for the tourists now going to the downtown Mendoza which is where the most people choose to stay we think it's a good place to stay you're close to everything there are restaurants there you can walk around do everything we even stayed in a very nice hotel there I'll leave it here in the description as well well located and cheap we have already stayed in another very good one which is a five-star hotel with a price lower than the five stars in the world so Mendoza has the cheapest prices for accommodation but it's a more sophisticated hotel this region's nice because it's next to Park San Martin people the size of Park San Martin is surreal it's a very big it's even has a street for cars in the middle of it so you can cross it by car and you can get to know it by foot it has several museums the science museum inside and the zoo which is very nice and if you have kids it's worth it it has several lakes fountains the gate the entrance gate is made of steel a beautiful iron gate which yields several nice pictures for your trip this park takes practically a whole day to visit its surrounding because it's very nice it's close to the hotels to the tourist area it's well worth it the landscape is amazing and you can visit there any time of the day that's very beautiful for you to have an idea, the Provincial Stadium, which is one of the main ones in the city, and the University of Mendoza are inside the park because it's so big. And in the park, there is also the Cerro de la Gloria. It's a lookout if you get there in a very high point. You can go there by car and you can go on a trail by foot. Wear tennis shoes, be prepared. It's not that easy, but it's not that hard either. You can do it. And you have a view of the whole city of Mendoza, which is the most beautiful thing. So it's worth it. There's the monument up there for you to take pictures it's a very nice place guys the view is sensational it's nice to go in the first days because you get a notion of how the city is how it's distributed and of course the Andes mountains are there in the background so I don't even have to tell you those pictures are going to look amazing Another place that's very touristy and easy to get to is the Plaza Independencia, a very iconic square in Mendoza, maybe the most important one. It's where there are events, demonstrations, shows, there's a very nice fair where you can buy handicrafts, local stuff, and it's very close to the area where you'll probably be staying, so you can walk around there, it's very nice. If you walk there, there's a fountain, a fountain that I don't remember why, but historically it's very famous, it's made of tiles, so people also go there, take pictures, but this region is very beautiful 
beautiful. I remember the fountains a lot, the garden. So it's a very nice place to sit, have some coffee. There are restaurants around, eat something there, explore a little bit this region that is also very nice. The landscape is amazing. You have all the things inside, all the green for you to take a look. You have a space to take very nice pictures there. And these are the main tours, of course, if you want to, guys, there are many things to explore. If you like adventure, there is kayaking, there is climbing in the mountains, in the Andes, and all this you can see better with the tour agency or with the website that sells the tours, there are all those options. That's who there are a few people for, yes, there are uh, people who like to go on this kind of trip, but 90% of the tourists that go there to uh, the wineries, they invest a lot of time in the wineries, they like it. The tour to the high mountains and these tours through the that are easier and are also very nice to get to know the city so that's why I say three days in Mendoza is very busy okay a lot of people sometimes go for three days take a holiday go on Thursday and come back on Sunday it's a bit of a rush the idea would be to get about five days for the region is already great if you can get a little bit more it's even better you have to explore everything and here below guys I'll leave all the links for you to organize your trip here in the description and in the first comments there is the description of the tours the agency the website that sells the tours the hotels we stayed at the map of the best hotels in the best region for you to stay the airline ticket searcher the car rental comparator that's very good and very cheap ah and travel insurance is now mandatory okay for Argentina after the pandemic it became mandatory to have international travel insurance but this website that I'm going to leave here below is a comparator that comes compares all the best insurance companies and finds amazing prices guys it's very cheap we have been using it for years it's the cheapest place of all take a look talk to them on chat they are very good there is also the cell phone chip i will leave it here below so you can use your cell phone at will there search google maps ways uh google tourist spots schedules and finally the cell phone ends up being super important and several other links there for you to plan your whole trip to mendoza and argentina with the best possible service and and always saving as much as possible on everything and that's it guys i hope you liked the video if you like it please don't forget to give us that like and subscribe to the channel because that really helps us a lot and don't forget to check out the other videos that are really good i'll leave the one about how to travel cheaply to mendoza up here that are several very important tips that will make you save a lot on your trip be sure to watch it and below the playlist with all the other videos from mendoza for you to watch and enjoy so thanks a lot i hope you liked the video and have nice trips